The big state of play we've been waiting for is finally happening. GTA 5 just hit a huge milestone. The summer sale is still going strong on the PlayStation Store and we have some new leaks about PSVR 2, which actually look really cool. I know us hardcore gamers don't really pay attention to it, but there's some crazy stuff going on in the world of sports video games. Just a couple months ago, we saw Tiger Woods switching over to 2K. Of course, we got MLB The Show on Xbox for free with Game Pass. And now there's some crazy stuff going on with the biggest sport in the world, soccer. So right now there's two big franchises in the soccer video game world. We of course have FIFA over over at EA, which is like Loot Box Simulator 2021. And we also have Pro Evolution Soccer, which Konami has been screwing around with for like years at this point. Konami's actually made a pretty big move with this franchise though, and they're getting rid of the Pro Evolution Soccer banner altogether, and now they're just calling it eFootball. And this is actually a really big change for the series because while it used to run on the Fox engine, which is the native engine they built to run Metal Gear Solid 5, which looks absolutely incredible, they're changing a lot of stuff behind the scenes with this new eFootball version so that it can also run on mobile. So you can play it on your iPhone, you can play it on your PS5, you can have one account with saves transferring and gameplay between both devices. Now, obviously people are pretty upset about this because no matter how good it looks on PS5, the engine is always going to limit the graphics because it also, again, has to run on an iPhone or an Android phone. But it kind of makes sense why Konami is even considering doing this because FIFA is just a monster at this point and Konami is trying to play different by having a free downloadable app that they even admit is basically a demo. It's going to have some basic modes on it and then you can buy a battle pass, you can buy some cosmetics. They want to monetize it in the same way that FIFA's monetized because I don't know if you guys have heard lately, but FIFA is just like a money printing machine. Now this is definitely going to surprise all of you, but I'm not like a huge sports fan or like sports gamer, but it's always interesting to me every year to see how they update the release strategy on these things because releasing a new game for 60 or $70 is starting to get to people because they don't make very big updates to these games. I mean, on Nintendo Switch, they call it like FIFA Legacy Edition or something like that. And it's basically a four or five year old version of FIFA that they just do a roster update on and still sell for full price. So there's some crazy price gouging, loot boxy, just really bad monetization strategies going on. And the logical conclusion of all of this seems to be like making these franchises platforms. So you download FIFA for free on your PS5, or you download Madden for free, and then you buy the new roster update, or you buy loot boxes, or you buy buy new access to a team or something like that. And it looks like Konami is just ready to take the first step into that. So I feel like over the next few years, instead of these annualized $70 releases, we're going to see some crazier ideas coming out of everyone, not just Konami. I just got a text from your mom that says you're not subscribed to PS Ready. So if you wanna make your mom happy, you should definitely hit subscribe and set your notifications to all like right now. I am absolutely shocked at how much GTA 5 is coming up in the news lately. It's honestly crazy to me that this game from 2013 is still so popular, but then you look at this new sales milestone that it just hit of 150 million copies sold, not downloaded because they gave it away for free on the PlayStation Store and on the Epic Store. This is sold copies of GTA 5 have just hit 150 million, which is absolutely insane. I think that makes it the third best-selling game ever, which is wild because you would have never expected that with GTA 5. Obviously, it's because GTA Online and people love this life sim aspect of it. I mean, I've gone on Twitch and looked at these role playing servers where people are like, oh, I'm going to be a mechanic today in Los Santos, or I'm going to be a cop today in Los Santos, and they do these car meets. So you can definitely see why GTA 5 and GTA Online by proxy are so big. And on top of those sales numbers, we also know that it's coming to PS5 and Xbox Series X, and we haven't really heard anything about how it's going to look and run. We do know it's going to be a free upgrade from the PS4 version if you already own that, which side note, if you don't own that, you're crazy because again, it's been given away for free. I know Amazon has sold it for like five bucks. Like you're seriously slacking on your GTA 5 buying skills if you don't have it already. Anyway, over on the German PlayStation blog, and this is the only place where this has popped up, so it could be total BS, a story popped up that said that GTA 5 is going to run at 4K60 on the PS5. Now it didn't say anything about ray tracing, which I know is the feature people really want in the game because there are a ton of reshades you can download on PC see that have shown what this game will look like with ray tracing. But again, this is the only website on the entire internet that said that
that we're getting this 4K60 graphics update for the game. And while I kind of believe it, I want to hold out just in case we are going to get ray tracing. Like I'm crossing my fingers for ray tracing because I have not played the GTA 5 story since I got it on my PS3 and it was running at like 20 frames per second. So if they add in these sick graphic updates, I feel like that's what kind of pulled me back in to give it a replay because it is a really good story. It's no secret at this point that Sony is still having trouble getting PS5s into the wild. We know they just ordered 12 million more processors, which is a big deal. And we know that they've already sold 10 million PS5s, but I didn't really expect them to have as big of a profit as they had in the past year. So they just reported that they're up about 26%, I just looked at my phone. They just had a report come out that says they're up 26% year over year, which honestly makes a lot of sense because when everyone was trapped inside their house last year, the biggest thing that they were going out to buy was a video game console, AKA a Nintendo Switch or a PS4. Like Sony sold a lot of PS4s in the past year. They've obviously sold literally every PS5 they could possibly make at the fastest rate they were able to make them. It makes a lot of sense why Sony is making so much money, despite the fact that they haven't had that many big game releases in the past year. This report also gotta keep in mind includes all of Sony, even though PlayStation is their big money maker, they have a lot of other stuff going on. They make phones, they make headphones, they make TVs, they make Blu-ray players, they make all this crazy stuff. And on top of that, they did just have an insane deal with Netflix where every movie that Sony makes right after it goes to theaters is just gonna end up on Netflix. And that includes stuff like Spider-Man No Way Home, we've got Morbius, we got Venom 2, Let There Be Carnage, we got a ton of Sony movies. They've got the new James Bond, movie no time to die now i don't know if that one's included in this netflix deal but you can see where sony is making money on the other side of the fence in the movie realm also obviously the last of us tv show they made that deal with hbo they're doing this whole one sony thing where they got the ghost of tsushima movie in the works so yeah it's good to see sony profitable again because i was around during the ps3 times when it was getting really bleak they had that big playstation network outage the ps3 was selling at a huge loss because no one wanted to pay 600 bucks so they had to cut the price they didn't have a ton of great games coming out when the console came out. Like things were bleak back then. It's nice to see after this amazing PS4 generation that things are still going strong for them. We're recording this when the abandoned update was supposed to come out. So we have to keep checking if the patch is out to make the trailer come out because uh, obviously it's about uh, 48 minutes late at this point. While abandoned might be a completely fake game, our merch store is totally real. And we have this awesome blue Spider-Man PS5 shirt that was hand drawn to go on the sweet t-shirt. And it's also available as a canvas, so make sure you look at our merch store, which is down below this video unless you have YouTube Premium, in which case it is not there. So a few videos back, we told you guys about this summer sale that's going on in the PlayStation Store. If you have a PS5, you'll see it the second you turn on your PS5 because it's actually got some really big, cool splash screen art. And Sony is still going crazy with this because a ton of games have just been added to the sale. And some of them are pretty good. The PS5 version of Final Fantasy VII Remake, which is called Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade, it has DLC, it's got PS5 updates, it looks almost like a new game. Like they did a really good job upgrading this game from PS4 to PS5. You can get the entire PS5 package for around 49 bucks right now, which is the cheapest that the PS5 version has been. MLB The Show just got its first price drop to $49, which if you haven't bought that or tried it out on Game Pass and you're really into baseball, I feel like this is your only option, no brainer. Like if you're waiting for a sale, these games don't get that cheap until the next one is announced. So I feel like you got a little while to wait there. Watch Dogs Legion, which kind of came and went last year is $19. I gave that game a try and it's actually a pretty cool open world game. Like it doesn't fall victim to a lot of the stuff that Ubisoft does, which is just make the same game across different franchises. It actually has some cool original ideas and it sort of feels like M rated GTA Pokemon. Like you're collecting people who have certain abilities or guns and you can go to different spots on the map at different times, find different characters. Like the game's actually pretty cool. I feel like it could end up as a PS plus game eventually, but for 20 bucks, it's kind of worth the gamble. I think. If you're looking for a JRPG that's gonna take you like 150 hours to complete, you should definitely buy Persona 5 Royal. It's $26 right now, and that is one of the most like high production value, really cool JRPGs to come out in a long time. I got into the Persona series when Persona 4 Golden came out on the Vita, and that is basically one of like 
four or five RPGs I've ever beaten. I played a little bit of Persona 5 when it came out originally, I think like five years ago, four or five years ago here in America, but I've heard that the Royal update is absolutely incredible. And then of course, because we always have to mention Star Wars if we can, Jedi Fallen Order is at its lowest price, I'm 99% sure on that, at around 20 bucks. Like that is a really good story-driven game that honestly rivals a lot of the movies. Like it's really, really good. I really enjoyed the story. The gameplay is awesome. It's like a Metroidvania. I, I can't recommend that game enough if you haven't played it. And it has an incredible PS5 upgrade that is also a re-release at this point. Like they did an upgrade when the PS5 came out that made it run, I think at like 1440p 60 or something like that, or just evened out a lot of the performance frame rate. But then recently they did a free upgrade to PS5, which basically was a re-release of the game and made it look and run even better. So yeah, if you don't have Jedi Fallen Order, definitely check that out for 20 bucks. As far as accessories go for the PS5, the one thing we're still waiting on is the PSVR 2. And we absolutely know it's happening because Sony's already shown us the controllers for the device, which if you've seen the Oculus Touch controllers that you get with the Quest and Quest 2, they're pretty much identical to that, which is good because those are the best controllers you can use right now that you're not shelling out like thousands of dollars for, like the ones on the Valve Index. But while Sony makes their tweaks behind the scenes to make a good headset that's also affordable, some of the specs are leaking out and it's actually pretty damn cool. Like I'm more excited for this thing than I've ever been for PSVR in general, or really, I guess VR at all. The biggest upgrade we're supposedly getting with the PSVR 2 comes down to the screen. So the original PSVR had a really, really low res screen, which makes sense because you've got to run these games at like 60 or 120 frames per second locked or else it'll make people sick, which it actually did make me sick when I used the PSVR because I played Resident Evil 7 before it came out and that screen door effect was just doing bad things to my brain. Like I almost threw up. Then I played the Oculus Quest 1 and I was like, damn, this VR thing is pretty cool. So if Sony can get their resolution up and match closer to what we have on the Oculus Quest 2 for the PSVR 2, I think that's gonna be a huge deal for them. And it looks like that's what they're doing because the resolution is supposed to be 2000 by 2040 pixels, which is pretty close to what we have on the Oculus. And on top of that, it's going to be an OLED screen, which puts it ahead of the Oculus Quest 2. And the reason you want that is because when you've got your face on a headset, right, and it's pitch black inside of there, when you don't have an OLED, the blacks don't really look black. You can see that they're a dark, dark gray screen, but when you have an OLED panel, it's true black. And when you're playing like a horror game, like Resident Evil 7, you want the shadows to be shadows. You don't want it to look like you've got a screen in front of your eyes. You want to feel like you're immersed in the world. So if Sony's using OLED on the PSVR 2, it's not only going to feel better than the PSVR 1, it's going to feel better than the Oculus Quest 2, which is its biggest competition. And the last news story I have for you guys today is that this legendary rumored state of play that we've been waiting for forever is finally happening next Thursday, August 19th. This is going to be a big one for Sony because they need to have something. With Horizon is rumored to be delayed out of the end of this year, they don't really have anything beyond, of course, Deathloop, which is a Microsoft published PS5 exclusive. I never thought that would ever happen in the history of the world, but here we are. Sony's biggest game so far right now for the rest of 2021 is a Microsoft published game. Obviously, if they're going to tell us at this event that they're delaying Horizon Forbidden West, they should do that with some awesome gameplay and really explain why they're delaying it. Say, yeah, we're putting in these big updates and making it look and run better on PS5 to put that big gulf between this game on PS5 and PS4 because we all know people are not happy that this game is coming to both consoles. They could also really wow people by showing us some gameplay from God of War 2 that got delayed into 2022. We all know that, but it was originally supposed to come out this year, so they better have some gameplay at this point or we could be waiting even longer for that game to finally come out. And I also heard a rumor about this event that we could maybe be seeing Ken Levine's game that he's been working on since Bioshock Infinite. I heard it's going to be a AAA game that's a lot smaller scale than what he's made before, but still anything that guy makes, I would play. And I could totally see that being announced at a PlayStation event because they're going for this whole like bougie look with the PS5. Like it's supposed to be more like nice and boutique and cool and stylish. Whereas the Xbox is like computer obelisk. And for racing fans out there, I feel like it's a guarantee that we get some updates on this beta for Gran Turismo 7 and possibly a release date. That was supposed to come out this year, but it got pushed into 2022, obviously, so they can port it to PS4, but they could still show us some gameplay and give us a beta release date. I feel like that'd be really good for the PS5. And then finally, I think we're definitely going to see Kenna Bridge of Spirits because that was supposed to be out later this month, but it got pushed into September. So they could really get people hyped for that game's release at this state of play. But yeah, guys, that's all the PS5 updates I have for you this week. Make sure you let me know 
know what you think down in the comments below. And remember, if you wanna stay PS ready, subscribe and set your notifications to all. As always guys, my name is Jimmy Champagne and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.